Hey everybody in my fifth grade class. Um, I'm going to read the next chapter of Hank the Cow Dog. So this is chapter three on the road again. If you know yesterday Hank got in trouble for um, jumping in the flower bed and getting in the cake with little Alfred. And so now Sally Mae is upset with him. So he's decided he's going to move on. Before I could get out of her yard, Sally Mae threw a hand trowel and little Alfred's toy truck at me. She missed me with both, but not by much. That truck would have hurt. I vaulted the fence right over the top of Drover. I could see his eyes. They were as big as two fried eggs in a skillet. I ran down the hill, past the gas tanks, didn't slow down till I got to the sewer. By that time, Drover caught up with me. Hank, what happened? Did you get the snake? Oh my gosh, what's that all over your face? I studied the rump for a minute. One of these days, I'm going to get tired of you sending me on suicide missions. Well, what do you mean? I mean, there wasn't a snake in the flower bed. It was a cat. Do you know the difference between a cat and a snake? No, what? He gave me that vacant stare of his. Just as I suspected. You saw Pete in the iris bed, and somehow that little pea brain of yours made him into a giant rattlesnake. No, it was a rattlesnake, huge one, and he's crawling right toward the baby. I know it was, Hank. All right, let's check that out. How many legs did your rattlesnake have? Drover rolled his eyes. Well, not very many. How many ears? Well, I didn't think to count them, Hank. By chance, did you hear the snake say meow or mew? No, he didn't say a word. Was there anything on the end of his tail? End of his tail? Well, if he was a rattlesnake, he must have had a rattle. But did you see it? You'd think so, wouldn't you? Uh-huh. But did you see it? Well, if it was there, I saw it. You're being slippery, Drover, but I'm not easily fooled. Now, once again, was it there? What's your answer? Can you give me a hint? Either yes or no. Did you see a rattle on the end of his tail or not? It's very simple. He thought for a long time. Yes. Are you sure about that? No, but you didn't say I had to be sure. I sighed and shook my head. Drover, you're the only dog in the security business whose testimony could be used by both sides at once. Oh, thanks, Hank. That's no compliment. Oh, gosh. I guess we'll never know if what you saw this morning was a snake or a cat or an elephant. Oh, it wasn't an elephant, Hank. I'm pretty sure about that. Are you trying to be funny? Me? No. That's too bad. Just for a second there, I heard a glimmer of hope. I waded out into the water and looked down at my reflection. My face was covered with cake crumbs and icing. I resembled a clown, which seemed very appropriate. Drover, I'm a failure. You are? I work 18 hours a day on this place. I try to do the right thing, but it seems that every time I turn around, I'm in trouble again. It's just not worth it. Why, up there in that yard, I could have been killed by that rattlesnake. I thought it was a cat. And for what? Why do I go on day after day beating my head against a brick wall? I bet that hurts. There's just no sense in it. Sounds crazy to me. Is it for the honor, the glory, the adventure? Well, it's bound to be something. Drover, what do you think about love? Oh, I'm for it. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. I spent too many years wrapped up in my career, and I never took the time to fall in love. Sometimes a guy can't see the forest for the trees, Drover. Yeah, most of them are down by the creek anyway. There's a whole world out there that I don't know anything about. It's a world of birds and butterflies and flowers and hay fever. It's a world of sunshine and poetry and songs. Drover, do you think I'm too old to act silly again and fall in love? I don't know, but you look pretty silly with that stuff all over your face. 
I gazed at myself in the water. Hank the cow dog. Hank the clown dog. Hit a ranch minority. That's what I get for my years of service. You're right, Drover. It's time for a change. You convinced me that it's time for old Hank to fall in love. I did that? Yep, by being such an incredible dunce. By sending me on suicide missions. By proving over and over that chaos and mismanagement are the natural order of the universe. Gosh, thanks, Hank. Now I shall take my bath and prepare this magnificent body for the ladies of the world. And then I'll bid farewell to this ungrateful place and travel down the creek to the next ranch, where dwells my true love. <clears throat> Drove his ear shot up. Hey, that's where my true love lives. I'll go with ya. Very well, Drover. We'll go together, and together we'll embark on a new career. Well, what career is that, Hank? I gave him a smile. We're going to become troubadours, poets, professional lovers. Boy, that sounds like fun. Yeah, fun. What a strange word to me. I know so little about it, but I'll learn to be frivolous. I glanced up toward the house, and one of these nights when the moon is dark and the coyotes are slinking through the shadows, they will regret what they've done to me. Yeah, they'll be sorry. What a delicious thought. Loper and Sally Mae out there with flashlights calling my name, begging me to come back, promising a fresh start and a better deal. But too late. I plunged into the warm green water, rolled and splashed and laughed and kicked my legs in the air. When I stepped out and shook myself, I felt as though I'd washed away the old Hank and become a new dog. Minutes later, we started off on our new adventure, heading down toward the creek. As we passed one of those big elm trees there in the flat, I caught a glimpse of Pete. He'd seen us, and fearing for his life, he'd begun slinking toward the tree. The old Hank would have taken time to whip him and run him up the tree, but the new Hank considered him an irrelevance, just another bad memory from years of squandered youth. Don't bother to run, cat. I'm finished with you and this ranch. I'm a changed dog. I don't lower myself to chase cats anymore. He reached his claws up on the tree trunk and started sharpening them. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Yeah, really, said Drover. We're not kidding this time. I bet I can make you chase me, said Pete. I laughed. Ha, 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 ha. I'm beyond that, Pete. It's all behind me now. We're quitting this ranch forever. You can have it. It's yours. He studied his claws. I still bet I can make you chase me. We stopped. All right, go ahead. You'll find that I'm a changed dog. Try me. He humped up his back and he hissed. Nothing, Pete. Sorry. He yowled and he spit. And I only laughed at him. He flicked into his tail back and forth. The feeling's gone, Pete. Sorry, old boy. Laughing at Pete and the whole ranch, Drover and I started out on our journey. How's your nose doing, Hanky? That was Pete's voice. I stopped. Slowly, I turned my head until I could see him. He was sitting at the base of the tree, grinning and a flicking the end of his tail. You shut your lousy, rotten mouth about my nose. Looks like somebody. He reached up and dragged his claws across the tree trunk scratched it you been warned cat one more word out of you and i'm liable to clean your plow hmm one more word how about nose that did it i went after him and drover was right behind me saying get him hanky get him darn near got him but he managed to escape up the tree at the last possible second let that be a lesson to you cat i called at him he smiled and flicked his tail Told you I could make you chase me. You haven't changed so much. That's what you think. We're leaving this ranch and we'll never be back. Oh, you'll be back, said Pete. I'll give you three days. And that's the end of the chapter. So the next chapter is going to be called The Horrible Quicksand Monster. And I want to point out in that chapter something. They talk about it in another book of the Hank series, but Hank really just got... Um, the green water he rolled around in was sewer water. And I don't know if you know what that is, but sewer water is like when you 
like all the waste and stuff from toilets and things like that. And if you live out in the country, they have like septic tanks, which is a different way of removing waste. So dogs like things that stink. Um, they love to roll in gross things. So Hank thinks that he now has the world's best cologne by rolling in the sewer. And you see, I hope that Hank is really, he thinks he's so smart, but he can be outsmarted easily. And Drover really is kind of a ding dong, but um, I do hope that this is the third chapter and I hope by chapter three, you're learning to really um, appreciate the story a little bit. And you know, it's weird. Um, it's just weird reading it to you this way, but I will not stop. I have a mission here, so um, I love you so much, and I miss you so much, and look for actual schoolwork this week, ah, real schoolwork, and just know that um, I got plans, and I will do chapter four tomorrow, and I think I'm going to start another series um, so I can have dual read-alouds, which I know it's not the same as you having books in your hand, but it's better than nothing, so. I like to keep these videos about 10 ish. This is 11 minutes. Anyway, I will talk to you soon. Remember, subscribe to my channel, Amanda Benison. It's my maiden name. And remember that your parents, I've encouraged them. I have a teacher Facebook page. So, um, and I sent an email to your parents tonight. So just know I love you so much.